So far this season, the Menards Chevy Series has visited Southern Florida and Western Tennessee. Now the excitement moves to the desert of Arizona for a weekend of high performance and higher sheen. Whether it's supercharged or super styled, if it's Chevys that you crave, this is the place to be. Welcome to the Menards Chevy Series. We're in Tucson, Arizona at Southwestern International Raceway. The temperature's in the high 90s, but we're gonna take it easy and chill out with some cool machines from the 50s, 60s, and 70s. Here's the first of our producer picks. Well, it's a 66 Chevy van. I've had this since high school, 1973, 42 years. I've done about 14 body modifications from uh, 76 Monte Carlo headlights to uh, 66 Pontiac Catalina taillights. Steel fender flares, seams are filled, and then black with purple pearl in the paint. When I was a vander back in the early 80s, everybody did their own interiors. Uh, nowadays, I know suede and leather is the way to go, but that's the way it was back in the day. I put a uh, 428 twin turbo uh, Pontiac motor in it. A little bit out of place there, hope they don't dog me too much. Going to try to make up for it with that 8-track tape player. Uh, we drive this thing um, at least every week, every two weeks. We go to cruise-ins, we go to car shows, uh, we go to events and parties. Uh, it, we've, we've, we've done quite a bit with it. It's not a trailer queen, uh, we drive this thing. There are quite a few Chevy-powered machines drag racing here today, but we've come across a trio of bowtie beasts that are a tribute to the golden era of the gassers. What this is, a 1939 Chevrolet two-door coupe. It was actually the business coupe. We acquired it from a little town down in Mexico. It was actually a chicken coupe when we got it. So we totally tore it all apart. We put a big block blown Chevrolet motor in it. It's a uh, four nine-inch rear end. Everything else in there is Chevrolet powered. I was born in the gasser era. I was a little bit late to have one. So we built one, my wife and I. We run it here at the Tucson track, Phoenix track. And we just had great loads of fun with it. 55, it's actually a gasser. My brother he, uh, used to race it about 30 years ago, uh, and I was just sitting in my backyard. Finally, the last few years, I was able to restore it. I want to go old school with flames. I just tried to find a body shop here in Tucson, and I finally just got somebody to go with, with the chameleon paint on the flames and just wipe the rest of it. The interior, actually, the wife wanted purple, so I wanted white and purple to kind of match the flames, and it came out pretty nice. It's a 1966 Chevy 2 Nova. I required it from an old high school friend, classmate. Built it through the years. I've always liked the theme of drag racing, uh, gasser, nostalgia. So I decided to build it that, that style. Well, the engine is a, a big box 454, four bolt main. I required it from another racing buddy of mine. And uh, actually it's been gone through the stroke and everything. So it's, uh, it's, it's pretty radical. Time now for this week's Rock Auto Restored Award. The Rock Auto Restored Award winner goes to Trish Williams. Trish, beautiful machine. Tell us about the engine. What kind of power plant is it? Well, the engine is um, a 602 big block Chevy engine. 1,200 horsepower, running the low sixes or mid sixes, uh, my ET. When you have over three G's at the launch, and then when it kicks in after after it shifts, I go through that finish line at 6.94 seconds at 193 miles an hour. It's nothing better than that. And using the car for a charitable purpose as well. Tell us a little bit about the nose of the car. The nose is uh, Cheyenne. She passed away when she was eight years old. So her mom and dad today go around to all the schools to talk about what kind of illnesses she had. And just because she was different and sick doesn't mean um, they should be afraid. And they pass on um, these, these uh, bookmarks to pass on kindness. And that's where Cheyenne kindness came from. 
Well, that is a great thing to do, especially with your six-second machine. And you're even sporting Christmas tree earrings out here at the Chevrolet Manufacturer Series. I always wear these. My husband gave me these probably four years ago, and I wear them every time I race. Coming up next, we'll introduce you to a former flight attendant and her remarkable 66 Malibu. So fasten those seatbelts for more good times from Tucson. This episode of the Menard Chevy Series is brought to you by ARP, the world leader in fastener technology. Original Parts Group, the world's largest source for GMA body parts and accessories. Custom Auto Sound, the originator of classic car OEM fit radios since 1977. And by Race Gas, get more out of your engine. Welcome back to Southwestern International Raceway and the Menard Chevy Series. There are all sorts of eye-catching Chevys here today, from sporty Corvettes to compact Corvairs to immense Impalas. But the biggest and the baddest here at Tucson just might be a pair of supersized Suburbans. Uh, it's a 1972 Chevy three-door Suburban. Uh, it's got Ride Tech Air Ride underneath. Uh, LS1 I bought that had a had a piston slap in it, so we re, redid the whole thing. It's got a small comp cam in it and a and a fast intake and stuff. So it uh, it put out 330 to the rear wheels on a chassis dyno. So it it gets around pretty good. And plus it gets 20 21 22 miles a gallon. So we go to Albuquerque a lot to shows there and. Uh, it, it's got uh, it's got 3,500 miles on it. I don't drive it a lot yet because we get rocks where we live, and you're putting in a new windshield all the time. So other than that, it's it's fun to drive. What is the significance of the Buffalo on the car? Uh, I retired from the motion picture television world, and uh, I trained animals for the studio. So it was just one of the animals that I really like. And, it's on all my cars, my truck, my trailer, everything. So girls want to trade trade their new Suburban for it. Their husband will walk by and the girlfriend or wife will grab him and you gotta look at this car. You know, they're they're interested in pickups, you know, so they come back and they look at it, but it's pretty funny. Babe magnet. Yeah, absolutely. Chick magnet, whatever you want to call it. It's a 55 Chevy Suburban now. Um, the frame itself was a one-ton dually 55 one-ton flatbed. Um, we saw the movie Twister after I got the frame and decided to put a 55 Suburban body on it and then make it a dually. The first question is always why, and the response is why not, just to be different. Um, it seems to be probably more hit, but there are obviously people that go, I don't get it, it's too big, but I love it. It's a 498 stroker motor with a 671 uh, Wii and blower on it. It's all original Navco axles with a Dana transfer case under it. So the frame and axles are all uh, Navco, which was a company that converted to 4x4s for GM and uh, other companies in the 50s. My wife helped me a lot with the colors. Um, she picked out the uh, mob and the yellow underneath, and then the green was just something that I've always loved. Plus, it's kind of almost an original Chevy green. So. You say green, but I see turquoise. Is this like that dress? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you got it. Well, they call the color a bright aqua green. So don't ask me how they get there, but yes, you're right. It is more of a turquoise. We started just literally doing a frame off because it was going to be a flatbed. Um, everything was going to show under the truck, so we literally stripped it down to nothing. Um, but then a lot of the axles, both axles were broken and leaking, so everything had to get rebuilt. So as, as we're rebuilding it, we just kind of kept powder coating and cleaning and detailing as we went. So that's how that happened. And it's got about 30,000 miles on it now. We finished this truck in 1995, um, and we drive it to just about every show we can. Um, if if it's not going to be too hot because it doesn't have AC. Now let's check out the Original Parts Group Award winner. The winner of the Original Parts Group Award is this 66 Chevrolet Malibu owned by Nancy Camp. Nancy, the car is gorgeous now, but it wasn't the way you started out. No, not at all. It began as a non-running rusted hull. It was blue, black bench inside, and an automatic. Didn't run, 
It did have an old 54, 454, sorry, with it, but it was not running. Totally different car. Instead of making it a Chevelle tribute car, you guys decided to go all out Malibu, fully customize it. Tell me about some of the things that are under the skin of this car. This particular car does have one SS element, the hood, just because I liked it. But we did badge it entirely as a Malibu, which is what it is. This is how it would look if you bought this car in 1966. But underneath, it's entirely different. It has a roadster top chassis, Detroit speed suspension, an LS3 480 horsepower with a hot cam engine. It's got a whole bunch of things, Wilwood brakes, 18s and 20s, that didn't exist at all at that time. The wheel and tire combination fills up the wheel well perfectly. Yes, it's, uh, they've been tubbed, as you can see, in order to hold the 20s in the back. Uh, but it gives it a different stance. If you'll notice, it slammed just a little tiny bit, which is unusual for a convertible. But I think it looks great, so we went with it. Nancy, during the restoration process, was it difficult finding parts for the car? The parts for the car uh, weren't quite as easy as I thought. And trying to find some original pieces was quite difficult. But there are some companies, one I relied on a lot, which is Original Parts Group, that makes absolute exact copies. The interior here, I got everything. The door panels, the seat covers, the console, the vertical top, the boot, all from there, and they are exact copies. So they fit perfectly, and as you can see, they have little badges on the seats, just like they used to have. Everything that they offer is, in fact, it's a copy. It's brand new, but this is how it looks, and it worked great, and they were very helpful. I got at least 30 different pieces on this car, came from the original parts group, yeah. What kind of response do you get when you're out with this car? It's always extremely positive. I think most people really enjoy seeing these cars brought back to life. I have a vintage 1966 Pan Am stewardess outfit that I wear. It's the same year as the car. People know this, and they remember too in our age group. And they'll often sing Come Fly With Me or Songs of the Day, which is entertaining. It's just meant for everyone to go back to a time that was uh, very appealing. In my opinion, and many others, the best year, 1966, every muscle car was gorgeous. All the Mopars were beautiful, everything. It was the pinnacle. Pontiacs, the Chevys, they were all gorgeous. And people love seeing these brought back to life. In a car like this, it's very modern, it's got a lot of equipment on it, it handles like you would not believe, like a modern car, but it looks stock, with, with the exception of the gauges. And I did put a different steering wheel because I like the wood. Basically a new modern era car in the skin of a classic. That's exactly right, well said. There's still plenty more of the Menard's Chevy series coming up, including a unique ambulance that was brought back from the dead. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Menard Chevy Series. A stroll around Southwestern International Raceway is a car lover's dream, and one particular vehicle is a real lifesaver. Time now to take a look at our Duracell Copper Top Award winner. It's awful hot out here in Tucson, Arizona, and if you don't stay hydrated, you might find yourself in need of an ambulance. Well, we found one. The DriveDuracell.com award winner. This car was, was a Biscayne sedan from new, which was then purchased and uh, converted by the Cotner Bevington Corporation of Arkansas. They took a brand new car and basically cut it up and turned it into an ambulance in 1960. Cotner Bevington did Oldsmobiles primarily as a conversion company, so the fact that this is a Chevy is pretty unusual, and I can't find any other ones out there. I've been working on the car almost 10 years. I've, I've owned it for 11, and I've, I've got about 10 years worth of work into it. There's always something. Uh, ambulances in particular are a little weird because there's a lot of extra wiring, there's extra equipment, there's a lot of, a lot of strange things that are not really stock. And especially when you're talking a, a one-off car like this, there are no parts availability, so you kind of have to fabricate and, and make things work. We had to tweak the exhaust a little bit because we put air suspension on the car so we can we can adjust the ride height, and it was too low for stock exhaust. So I was able to find the, the gentleman that makes the exhaust for most of NASCAR. It's a, it's a long, low, rectangular piece, and it, it just it looks really kind of cool on there, and, and it gives me the clearance I need so we don't hurt anything. We spent a lot of time researching the car. When, when we were rewiring the car for the first time, I actually found a credit card from the community of Genesee in Idaho, a little town in Idaho. And the card expired in 1963, which kind of gave me my first clue as to where it was in service. And about a year and a half ago, we were finally able to visit the town of Genesee. And on our trip, we were able to verify that it was, in fact, their ambulance. And we found pictures of it brand new when, shortly after they bought it. So it's, it's, it's kind of a, a needle in a needle stack trying to find the history of these cars because there were so few of them made to begin with. 
but we were very fortunate that we found its home and, and where it came from. Form and function. That's, that's what it's built for. We built it to drive and enjoy, and if it doesn't work, you can't drive it. So we, we, we need to make it functional. This ambulance is quite a ride. It's awesome. And I'd much rather be in an ambulance than that hearse on the other side of the shed. Chevy events draw all sorts of car owners, and one even made the long haul from the heartland of Kansas to the Arizona desert to show off his sleek machine. This is 67 Nova. Had the car approximately 30 years, and about five years ago, we thought we need to make a resto mod out of it, so here's what we ended up with. It's got a LS9, making 638 horsepower. The LS9 took a lot of fabrication. It takes a two water system. The air to air has its own water pump, and that took a separate system, plus the regular engine systems, and dry sump under it took a oil reservoir under the radiator, so lots of customizing under it. And that's what started the build, so then we had to just continue on at that same level, and that's why we get the, you know, all leather, posted inside, satellite radio, electric windows, electric doors, electric trunk. We just tried to make it as modern as we could. That is a 95 Jaguar green with a pearl popped into it. It's a custom color, but yeah, you got real, real lucky on it. It, it makes lots of shows, and we'll drive just a little bit of shows sometimes, but too much cleaning. There's a time that we will be driving it. It has good air conditioner in it, and it, it drives good. Uh, love to go to new places and meet new people. And, and if you go to car show with people, you always find somebody that you can listen to or you can talk to, one or the other. We have to take a short break, but stay with us, because when we come back, the Menard Chevy Series will turn our attention to a pair of pickups. This episode of the Menard Chevy Series is brought to you by ARP, the world leader in fastener technology. Original Parts Group, the world's largest source for GMA body parts and accessories. Custom Auto Sound, the originator of classic car OEM fit radios since 1977. And by Precision Turbo, the winning edge in boosted performance. One of the big elements is the swap meet, where you can find just about anything to turn parts like this into cars like this one. It's a 1950 Chevy half-ton truck. In 1999, I, I purchased this for $700. And I tore it all apart from the frame up. It took six years to build it. It's a, a 67 396 board to 402, and I have an M22 four-speed behind it. Lake and rear end, and a Mustang two front end under. The tail lights are uh, 39 Fords on the fenders, and then I have a couple of bed uh, brake light and turn signal, and then uh, I had the center uh, cow vent filled in. And then it's got a Chrysler gas tank in the back instead of behind the seat. The interior is uh, 86 a GMC Sonoma uh, front seat, and then it's uh, Australian leather by Custom Concepts here in Tucson. And you did the black paint yourself? Yes, I painted it myself. I painted the chilies on the front. Uh, sp splash apron and then on the tailgate and then a little bit on the dashboard. I guess it'd be Arizona chilies. You know, it's, you know, it's a labor of love and so you just enjoy it after you build it. All kinds of great stuff going on here at that Southwest International Raceway. Shana Keller, you guys are putting on a great event. Thank you. It's been a decade since we've hosted this event here, so, so far so good. We've had a great turnout, a lot of great drag racing, and then obviously the car show has been spectacular. The drag racing in the background, everyone is loving it, but some incredible cars. Absolutely. There's some everyday cars here, and then there's some cars that people have spent a lot of time working on and restoring. And growing the program in the future, it seems like something great to build upon. Yeah, this is just a starting block for us. It's been a, uh, about 10 years since we've had a, uh, an event here, so there's some things we can work on, but so far, so good. Great turnout. Our final award is from Minty's, available at Menards, along with other fine true science products. And the Minty's Top Dog Award for the Tucson area goes to this 1937 Chevrolet pickup truck. 
Dale Buck, tell us about this truck. That's a 1937 Chevy pickup, and I've owned it since I was 18 years old. That's a lot of time. I'm sure you've seen a lot of different things with this vehicle. I have. I used to drive it to work every day. It was our grocery getter. It had an old six-cylinder in it and uh, granny four-speed. And we decided to street rod it after it sat for about 20 years. And uh, this is what we got now. It's running a 600 horsepower stroker motor, a nine inch Ford narrow rear end, 700 R4 transmission. It's running Mickey Thompson uh, tires and rims. And uh, it's just a great truck. How much work went into making it like this? A lot, a lot. It doesn't take 10 years to build the truck, but on our funding, that's what it took. The colors on the truck are tangerine and cinnamon pearl. Everybody loves the truck. Everybody likes it. It's just a lot of fun and it draws a lot of attention. There are a lot of details. The bed, for instance. Tell us about the wood. The wood, actually, I handpicked the wood from Home Depot. It's just solid oak. And what we did is we used Watco products and uh, stained it and just waxed it, and that's what it is. The interior also is standout. Yes, uh, that's done by uh, a friend of mine in Phoenix, Hot Rod by Glenn. I chose him to do it because he does nice work. And there's a big personal story involving this truck. Yeah, there is. Uh, actually, I was drag racing when I was younger. Everything I had that I drove was tore up with the exception of this truck. And when my oldest son was born, I took my wife to the hospital in this truck. And it's paying off big time now. It is. We're having a ball with it. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have here in Tucson, but we've met a lot of great people here in the desert. We saw a lot of awesome machines, and we had a great time. I hope we can do it all again next year. Watch us next week as we continue to follow the Chevrolet series around the country. I think I should see Wiley Coyote and the Roadrunner somewhere around.